Welcome back to another video, guys. We're going to be talking about the blockbuster trade that happened earlier today. Francisco Lindor being traded to New York. He is now a New York Met. So Merry Christmas, New York Mets fans. Christmas came a little later this year. I guess now you could say uh, Happy New Year because you just got arguably the best shortstop in all of baseball in Francisco Lindor. So in this video, we're going to be breaking down the trade, uh, who got who, as well as what the Mets lineup looks like now with the acquisition of Francisco Lindor. So we're going to be breaking down the blockbuster trade. Um, the Mets are getting Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco, again from the Indians, as I stated earlier. Uh, two all-star type players, Francisco Lindor being a shortstop. Uh, I would presume that's where the Mets will be playing him is at shortstop. That's where you're going to want him, where he can just cover as much ground as possible. He plays a platinum glove defense, even better than gold glove at, at times. He Seemingly nothing really gets past him unless it's coming over 100 miles an hour. And not to mention, he's a switch hitter. He hits over 30 home runs a year. He drives in over 100 runs. He's everything that you would hope for in a shortstop in Major League Baseball. And then not to mention, they also got Carlos Carrasco. He hasn't really, um, you know, had played a full season in a while uh, due to his uh, cancer diagnosis. And then he's also dealt with some injuries in past years, so he hasn't had a chance to really uh, show his full potential in the past uh, three to four years just due to the injuries and then also, the, like I said, the cancer diagnosis. He's, he's, he's been off the field and trying to work his way back slowly. Uh, nonetheless, he's a, he is a consistent pitcher. Um, he has about a three and a half ERA just, just consistently across the board once he is actually able to get onto the field and be there with some level of consistency. He's a proven starter. And then also the Cleveland Indians, they are basically getting a load of prospects in return from the Mets. Um, it's obvious the Mets won this trade ever since the beginning of the offseason. There was reports and rumors just floating around that Francisco Lindor was eventually going to be traded. And so this was really just imminent on the on the Indians' part. We all knew it was coming. It was just a matter of time. Uh, for Cleveland Indians fans, I wish they probably wish it was different, but it's not. And so they are getting shortstops. Andres Jimenez as well as Ahmed Rosario, and then uh, again, two prospects, right-hand pitcher Josh Wolf and outfielder Isaiah Green. Now, sh the shortstops, Andres Jimenez and Ahmed Rosario, they were actually, I, I say prospects, they're, not everybody is a prospect. Ahmed Rosario and Andres Jimenez were actually on the Mets uh, MLB roster, and they actually did play on the MLB team in 2020. Josh Wolf and Isaiah Green, th those are two prospects. Uh, they, they've they been in, in the Mets farm system, and I would assume that whenever they transfer over, they'll be in the Indians farm system as well for at least a, the next few years. Uh, the best piece that the Cleveland Indians are getting back in this deal, I would say, is Ahmed Rosario. You're obviously downgrading from Francisco Lindor. There is no other players in the MLB that could fill his role and it be an upgrade. That's just seemingly not possible. Uh, Lindor is the best shortstop, so that's upsetting. But also, we all knew the Indians didn't have any money to re-sign him. His, his deal was coming up due, and so it was... Again, it was just it was obvious that this this time was coming for the Indians. So as promised, I wanted to go ahead and show the Mets projected lineup. Now, obviously, things can change. We still have spring training to go through. Players can get injured. Players can get traded, so on and so forth. But uh, this is from oh, I want to be I want to make sure that I'm saying his name right. Anthony DeComo. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, this is also his Twitter feed, so he's a Mets beat writer for MLB.com, Anthony DeComo. I, again, I, I hope to go I'm saying that right. Um, so uh, he, went, he was in on the deal and reported the deal as well for MLB.com. And uh, so this is the Mets projected lineup. We're going to go ahead and move down here, and I'll zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better. So they are projecting that uh, Jeff McNeil will lead it off, Lindor second, Conforto third, Dom Smith, if there is, in fact, you can see the asterisk there, uh, if there is a DH in the National League in 2021, 
Uh, all things lead to know that that won't be happening, but we'll, we'll wait and see on that. Pete Alonso batting fifth, uh, Nemo sixth, J.D. Davis, third baseman, batting seventh, James McCann batting eighth, and then Luis Guillorme, I believe I'm saying that right, Luis Guillorme uh, batting ninth, uh, rounding off the lineup, uh, playing second base. So Lindor, uh, he's a huge upgrade for the Mets, especially with still the rumors floating around that George Springer's still on the table. Does George Springer get signed on by the Mets? Uh, the Mets are, are still in talks with him. Uh, they, to this point, there's been no reports that the Mets have offered George Springer anything, but the fact that his name is at least tied to this lineup, this lineup that we sit right here, add George Springer to this lineup, you have a well-rounded lineup. Not only to mention, the Mets pitching in the rotation, they're starting pitching rotations already. It's fine as it is. They'll be adding Noah Syndergaard. He's coming off Tommy John surgery. So uh, the Mets are looking good right now. If they can add anybody, anybody else, whether that be George Springer, whether that be Trevor Bauer, or some other starting pitcher that's still on the market like a James Paxton, they will be set up for years to come. And um, it's a very, very good time to be a New York Mets fan. Before we end this video, guys, I just wanted to state that uh, this kind of came as a surprise to me. I did not think that Lindor would be a Met. I didn't think that a deal would actually get done for Francis, done, you know, a trade would actually happen with Francisco Lindor's name attached until I was February at the earliest is what I was thinking, quite honestly. So uh, for him to get traded, you know, in, in early January came as a surprise to me. The Mets so much, it, it isn't. It doesn't really truthfully surprise me that the Mets are going to end up being his landing destination. Uh, they just recently, you know, changed owner Steve Cohen. He's very aggressive. He has a very deep pocket. He's showing it with this move, and so that that didn't really surprise me. I was actually thinking in the back of my head as a dark horse team. I thought he fit very well with the Cardinals. Cardinals. I know a lot of people will probably give me bash me for that um you know the cardinals don't have a whole lot of money but i was thinking that they would be trading away you know some of their uh some of their more veteran guys some of their people that have been really loyal to their uh franchise i thought maybe some of those pieces would be moving in an attempt to at least persuade the indians the indians were really in a they were really in a corner and really desperate to uh, unload lindor's contract and that that spells trouble for uh for that franchise, but it spells really good for the rest of the league because they can go in and try to attempt to get that guy for, you know, a steal, a hell of a deal. And I think that's what you're seeing here uh, with this trade um, that the Mets were able to to pull off. One very last thing that I want to throw in here is that uh, Francisco Lindor, when he is traded, he has one year left on his deal. And so uh, it isn't a foregone conclusion that Francisco Lindor will be a Met, you know, lifelong. It's certainly going to be a year where Lindor is going to have to prove his worth, and uh, I'm sure he will. Uh, that's really to be expected. I'm sure that he's really going to shine in New York City, in Queens, New York. You know, time will tell. Time will tell if, if he gets uh, an extension. I think he will. We'll have to wait and see. Carlos Carrasco, that's coming along with him, you know, he's he's tied down for two years and, and then an option thereafter. So neither one of these players are really tied down for a, you know, long haul right now as it sits. So it'll be interesting to see how this progresses in the years to come. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, that's going to wrap it up. Please leave a like on the video. Subscribe down below. Turn post notifications on so you're updated whenever I post fresh new content and you never miss the latest MLB offseason news, especially whenever trades like this happen. You don't want to be uh, you don't want to be left out again. That's going to do it. We'll see you in the guys in the next one. Tabor time out. Peace.